Welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna. And we're getting really, really close to uh, finishing this build and uh, getting the final paint done and wrapping this thing up. But, of course, before we can do that, we need to reconstruct the hood. So all the deconstruction is done, now it's time to add the parts back on. So in this first section, I'm just going to go over the parts that need to go back on the model, and I'll talk about those a little bit. So, let me take this off here. So we've got the shell here with no parts on it. So the first thing that I'm going to put back on it is the inertial filter hatch. Uh, Canon and Company part number 1351. That's pretty basic. Just cut it off the sprue, clean up the sides, and glue it where it's supposed to be here. The next part that will go on is the uh, turbo hatch, number 1951. Again, same process. It's going to go right here. Um, basically cut it off, clean up the edges, and glue it in place. Then we're going to move to the uh, dynamic brake fans and the radiator fans. So we'll get those done. After we get those done, let me put these in order here. Then I am going to move on to the um, the uh, lift rings. So I use Plano lift rings. Um, these parts, um, thanks to um, an internet friend, Miguel Lawrence who works for a short line up in Canada. I believe it's a uh, Genesee and Wyoming company. I don't know which one. But he verified a, a long time ago, he verified the sizes, the different sizes of lift rings. And we got that to Keith at Plano and Keith did a great job of etching all the different sizes. So I'll be going over those sizes. The size you don't see here in, in, in I'm sorry, there's three sizes that go on EMD second generation locomotives. The size I don't have out is the largest size that goes on the first generation, like Jeep 7s through um, Jeep 20s. So um, I'll go over that stuff when I get to it. So we got those that have to go on. And um, after that, we'll put on the the fan hatch um, grab iron, which is the cal scale. I like the cal scale one. Um, they're very, very rigid, so they're really hard to bend, and um, I like them a lot. They work really, really well. That's part number uh, 190, 523. After that, we'll put on the um, sand fill hatches, and that is uh, detail associates number 3001. There's only one type of sand hatch that goes on GP35s. And Detail Associates is the only manufacturer that makes them. Um, Cotto has the correct style on there, except they're just flat down on the hood. So we'll be putting the, the correct style out of this pack on there. Um, after that, it is the grab irons. I'll be using the Titchy grab irons, um, part number 3021 are the straight grabs. Those go on top of the nose and on the front, on either side on the front. The rest of the grabs are Titchy, uh, was that, uh, 3015, and they are the drop grabs. So those will have to go on. But before I put those on, there's some things I need to do to these. I need to straighten them up. They're, they're good grabs. they just not fully squared up. So we have to straighten those up. And um, before we fully put the grabs on, I'll be using these PBL um, grab iron ends, part number PBL111. So this is, this is a, a clean pack here. This pack will do three locomotives with 18 NBWs left over. And I'll go over how to hold them, how to clean them up, and what you need to do to them before you 
put them on your models because there's some um, cleanup you have to do to them. Not a lot, but I'll show you what I do to make sure that they go around the grab iron properly. So we'll take care of that. And then, of course, we have the, um, the Cannon and Company brake pump, um, this part here and this part here. So those have to go on. And of course, they just go into here. Now, when I do the fans, and um, let me talk about the fans for a moment. Um, I'm not bashing Dave or Cannon and Company. Um, the fans have gotten in pretty bad shape, and it's, you know, Gordon made these molds out of brass, so brass is not going to last a long time. Um, hardened steel will last a long time, but brass will not. So the more you use them, the more worn out they get, and these fans are showing their age. Um, it looks like we're coming to an end of an era with these things. I don't know if Dave is going to fix the molds. Uh, from what I've heard, he's not going to. And when they're done, they're done. And it's a shame. Um, I'm really sorry to see them go and stuff like that. There's a lot of flash on them now that you need to clean up. And, of course, as modelers, that's something we, we have to live with and, and such. But it looks like we're going back in time to the age of the 1980s and 1990s with our modeling and stuff. So it's really sad to see that, that there's not enough people out there building models. But, you know, it, it's what it is. Um, a lot of people are liking the, the, uh, the manufacturers, you know, putting out what they have and, and stuff. Um, but unfortunately, that leaves people like us um, as dinosaurs and in the dust and, and uh, we'll probably fade away one day and all these parts will fade away with us. But unfortunately that's the way it is but thankfully I foresaw that a long time ago and I bought everything that I needed um, probably about six or seven years ago so whatever I want to build for the rest of my life which yeah, I'll be lucky if I get 10 models done, <laughs> 10 locomotives done. I'll get freight cars done like crazy, but I'll be lucky to get 10 or 12 or 15 models, locomotives done. Um, I have everything I need. And so, but I feel sorry for those guys that are coming into this and seeing videos like this and then not being able to get the parts because I just looked on the Cannon and Company website and all of these fans are out of stock. Um, the only one that's not out of stock is this one, the 1707, and the, the same type of um, um, cap top radiator fan, um, I'm sorry, the cap top um, uh, dynamic brake fan. Those are fairly new, so those are still in stock, but all of the other fans are out of stock with no ETA on when they will come back in stock or even if they'll come back in stock. There's also a note on his page that the press, and I'm, I'm taking that as the press that pushes the molds together in the injection molding machine. Um, they're having problems with it, and I guess they're trying to fix it. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, so it's, I'm sorry to see that happen. Um, there is a newcomer on the scene, um, Shortline CAD, and he's attempting to bring fans out. They are 3D printed, and actually, he's almost there. Um, I bought a set of them, and if he can just work out a few things, we're back in fans, at least the 48-inch fans. I don't know about, um, like, cap top fans. I don't know about... Um, uh, the the 30, 36 inch fan and stuff like that. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. So anyway, let me um, get the camera set up and let me go through putting this stuff on. Um, I really want to get this thing done so I can move on to the next um, project. I don't want to start projects and and you know in between stuff. I've been doing that too much and then I I get you know pulled away from what I'm actually focusing on. So 
let's get this thing going. Let me get the camera set up and we'll start loading this shell up with some detail parts. All right, so the first thing is the inertial filter hatch. So I've got it out of the package here. And even looking at this part, you can see that the mold edges are starting to wear out. They're not as crisp as they used to be. But that's easy to fix up, or easy to fix. You just take a, a sanding stick, and you just carefully sand the edge just a little bit to take off some of that uh, transparent, um, uh, what do you call it, um, flash. So, got my PBL cutters. Um, these are, it looks like it says, number 804B, super fine gate nippers from PBL. These are fantastic. I have, these are my old ones. These are from PBL also. This one has a tip that broke off. I use this one for cutting wire now. I'll show you what I use this one for. This is very important. It's old also, so the teeth aren't as sharp, which is good, and I'll, and I'll explain that later. So like I said, this one that had the, the tip that broke off, I'll cut wire with that. And I have this new one, and I have this other new one that with the yellow cap, and it is number 803, clear vision gate nippers. And the reason he calls it clear vision is because there's a little bit of a curvature coming up to the blade. Instead of like where this one is straight across the bottom. So I haven't used this one much, but it's really, really good too. I highly recommend these PBL nippers. Much, much better than the Pakistan or India ones that when you close them, they don't come together. These come together and are ground really sharp and really nice. So I come in here with the gate nippers. Nip it off, nip the gate off, not, not the part yet. Then come up to the part, right on the edge, and just cut that right off. And then now, like I said, I'll just go around the edges very lightly. Okay, well, let me get this little bit more on this edge. All right, now let's see if I can put this on the right way. <laughs> I'm pretty good at uh, not paying attention to what I'm doing and putting things on the wrong way. Well, luckily, I have this ghost image of where the, the dustbin exhaust was, so I can just put the new dustbin exhaust right over that. And this goes right back to the back edge of the inertial filter hatch. Now, I keep saying I use this lime green bottle, but I don't tell you why. I mean, uh, of course you know why. It's glue. It's liquid cement. But this is the magic stuff that glues to cotto plastic. I... I have no idea why this stuff does not, this one here, this one does not melt this plastic, but this one will make stuff stick and stick permanently. So I buy this one now, I don't buy that other one. So we're just going to go ahead and just go around the edge, just going to hold it down. Just get it to stick, and then we'll line it up in the back. Take a straight edge, right across the back there. Get it lined up, and line it up with the sides as well. Make sure it's 
lined up in the back again. Let me make sure this side, I'm looking, I'm looking right down the sides here to make sure the edge is even with the side of the uh, inertial filter hatch. And that looks good, so let's get it glued in all the way around. Now you see me shaking my bottles because I'm almost out of glue and I need to get the glue up onto the uh, onto the brush there. Now they say you can pull this brush out and make it longer, which I'm just too lazy to do that. And you'll see that I go this way and then I go that way. And that's because when you touch this brush to this edge first, most of it's going to wick off and then you're going to have a drier and drier brush as it goes down. So I go this way and then this way so I get a good even glue seal all the way around. Alright. Okay, so the thing about this glue too is it evaporates really fast. So if you don't have the parts touching, it's not going to stay wet enough to melt it. So it's not touching right now. There we go. So I have to go back and redo these. Okay. Put some pressure on it and do it again. Yep, I can see a, I can see it lifting a little bit. There we go. There's that. How about the back edge? Back edge looks good. Let's look at the front edge. Front edge looks good, and look at the right side edge, looks very, very good. All right, so the inertial filter hatch is on. Okay, let me just double check, make sure it's squared up in the back, and it is. Okay, so we got the inertial filter hatch on. Next up, is the dynamic brake hatch. Now after I get, I'm sorry, not the dynamic brake hatch, the uh, uh, turbo exhaust hatch. Now after I get this put on, I'm going to go and clean up the fans. There's, uh, there's enough flash on them that I gotta get in there and clean up. Gotta clean up the insides of the fan area and do a little bit of um, clean up where the gates are and stuff and just get all that ready and then we'll get them installed. Now let me give you a, a word of warning. On these newer kits, this one is an older kit. On the newer kits, where's my pointer? Never ready when I need it. Okay, on the newer kits, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, see these grills here? On the newer kits, a lot of these center ones are not shot all the way, so you got gaps and stuff. So if you're ordering from somebody, make sure that they you tell them to look at the grills to make sure the plastic's shot all the way through. So I'm not going to put the grill portion in right away. I'm just going to put the, uh, the uh, hatch on. So I'm going to do the same thing with my nippers, is I'm going to cut first away 
from the part and pay attention to what these said this is this says front on it so that means this longer side is the front so let me cut these sprues off Okay, and where's my, there we go, sanding stick just to clean up the edges, make them nice and flat on the front. Get my toothbrush out here. Now there's a little bit of the sprue gate still on there. Things not cutting as good. I need to put a new blade in there. Because if you don't have a new blade and it's not cut slicing properly, you have a good chance of ruining your part. So let me get a new blade out real quick. This is one of those tough ones. There we go. This is one of the old handles. It's solid. It's not hollow on the inside, so it has good weight to it. I think this is, my dad got this handle when I was probably, I didn't even know what models were. the back side, do the same thing on the back. Sides. All right, now this line, you can, where I cut it off, you can still see the outline of where the old one was because the plastic color is different. So this one is easy to do. Just put it right in. Goes even with the front edge there. So I'm gonna get some glue on here. Get it underneath there. Lock it in place and push it up against this scale. Look at that, didn't even stick. Now, you gotta, now it's sticking, of course. Okay. Now I gotta make sure it's even from side to side. All right. Oop, I gotta get more glue in there. Parts lined up. All right, so I didn't give you the whole take on, on this glue. You got to get enough in there. For it to melt before it starts evaporating. Alright, now I can just glue this down all the way around.
Okay, so I'm going to let that set up, and then you see that hole that's left there after milling off the um, cast-on um, <coughs> exhaust hatch. I'll come back later after this has dried, <coughs> excuse me, and set up, and I'll cut that open wider so you don't see it down through the uh, opening there. But I don't need to put the um, the grill portion on it yet. So I'll just set that aside. Alright, so that takes care of those two parts. Like that. And now, I am going to go ahead and, and take these out of the packs. And I am going to clean them up so that I can start putting the actually I've got a dynamic brake fan already done um, this was the one that I used for testing the fit so I can actually glue this one and I have to glue it in the, in the proper orientation so I can go ahead and get that one glued on but I need to clean these up and I need to get the fan guard out and glue it onto the top here now cleaning these up is no different than what you do with any other parts. It's just when you clean up the fan guards, leave them on the sprues. It's easier to hold them and it keeps them a bit more rigid. When you go to clean up the outside of the fan guard, that's when you have to cut them off the, the sprues and, and work that. And I'll show you, I made a tool that, I can, that helps me support these things to do that. So I'll go ahead and get these cleaned up and uh, we'll come back and get them installed. Okay, um, as I come across things, I will video them like a tip or, or something to be aware of or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll turn the camera on and video them for the fans uh, while installing. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say is when you're cleaning up the fan bases, whether it's a, a dynamic brake fan or a, a um, radiator fan, as you can see here, the deterioration of these molds. You can see the flash in here, here. Uh, this fan I can't even use. I don't know what this little booger is right there. And it's, um, it's not fully shot right there. There's a little divot in it. These two I can use, which is fine. Um, it's a Jeep 35, so I only need two. And um, quite honestly, I don't even know what happened to this uh, this uh, motor base. It's gone. I don't know what all this crap is on the fan blades. But... Uh, Oh, it's just sad. But anyway, the best way to clean these up is, of course, cut them off. Now, this is the bases. Cut them off cleanly. Clean up the outside. Then glue them in. And then clean up the inside. That way they're solid in here and they're not going to flex. And you can have a little bit more pressure to clean up the, the inside. Now, the reason you have to clean up the inside is because from this point I'm sorry from this point underneath the flange down is one side of the mold and from the flange up is another side of the mold and if I look in here I can see that the mold is starting to offset um, not that bad they can be cleaned up but not that bad now on the instructions for the um, What's this? The, uh, that's the radiators. I'm looking at the... Okay, here we go. The um, dynamic brake fans. It says, orientation. One pair... Let's see if I can show this to you. It says... Uh, one pair of motor supports should point to the left side of the unit. Often the dynamic fan on GB to blah blah blah. So that's true, but there are three motor supports. 
So which one do you think should point to the left? There's a key to know which one is pointing to the left. So here we got the left right over here. I don't know if you can see this, but maybe a light there maybe. You see these little bolt heads around the perimeter of the base? It's the motor mount. These are the motor mounts right here. A pair of motor mounts. The motor mounts that go exactly between the two bolt heads are the ones that go to the left. So that's how you know. On the, on the uh, radiator fans, it's easy because you've got the pair of motor mounts uh, pointing toward the flats. So that's not a big deal. So anyways, I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to clean up the perimeter on the outside. I'm going to glue them into the shell. And then I'm going to come back and scrape the uh, mold parting line on the inside. Again, always use a brand new sharp blade to do this. Well, I've got the fan bases in place. And, and dynamic brake also, you saw that. So one thing I want to point out, these fans, uh, what was that part number? Uh, 1707, the Canon um, cap top, 36 inch cap top fans, they do have an orientation you need to pay attention to. Let me zoom in, see if I can point it out here. It's easy to understand. You get as close, oop, in a little fuzzy there. There we go. Okay. So you get myself a little pointer here. All right, so. These are the mounting bolts right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight mounting bolts. You notice how the center line here, they're evenly spaced across the center line? Well, do not put this little detail right here on the center line right there. It needs to straddle the center line evenly also. What that detail is, is the strap that holds down the grill. So it goes, so you got the bolts, then the strap, then bolt, bolt, strap, bolt, bolt, strap, bolt, bolt, strap. So that's the orientation of um, this fan, this 36 inch cap top fan base. All right, so I've got the, all the fan bases on. Um, I just went over it with the, the grip blaster with the pencil gun, not the trigger or the pistol grip gun, but the pencil gun. And around the bases just to make sure that everything was down tight and there were no um, things going on with the shell surface that I had missed or anything like that. And it takes that shine off where you put the glue down so I can, I can make sure that everything is, is where it's supposed to be and glued down properly. So that's taking care of that. The next issue is going over all of this to find a good, to find three good fan guards. Now these ones are out because they're just horrible. <laughs> Zoom in and we can show you what I mean by horrible. Get that in okay, so what I mean by horrible, the flash isn't horrible because I can remove that. What's horrible and unacceptable, this bolt head's gone, that bolt head's gone, that bolt head's gone, that bolt head's gone, that's got half of it missing, and that one is gone also. So that one's not useful. On this one we got mm, almost nothing there, almost nothing, well a little bit there. This one's gone, so unacceptable, won't use that one. Um, this one's almost acceptable, so we can we can cut that one off and call that one an almost. So these ones, trash. Let's look at this one. This one, this one's gone, gone, gone. 
trash. Let's look at this one. Ooh, they look good until you look at <laughs> this right here. Not shot all the way. Trash. All right, I'm glad I paid full price for these fan kits. All right, so that one's almost. Let's look at this one. This one is an almost. It actually has one from the days of Gordon Cannon. Uh, at least one of the bolt heads. Well, not quite. What you what I'm what I'm talking about is this bolt head, and then there's a little bit of a, a tab sticking down. That tab represents what the fan guard ring bolts into to hold it in place. Most of these are non-existent, but there's nothing you can do about it anymore. You just have to live with what it is and hope for the best. So these, this one is this one's an almost. We'll put that one in an almost pile. All right, let's look at this one. This one, this one is acceptable. So there's one. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, no. Nope. That one's an almost also. Most of one of the bolts are gone. So let's look through this bag and see what I got here. Now, I'm doing this out of frustration. Um, and a little comedy but you know <laughs> I can see why there's no more fans in stock I don't know if Dave wants to sell them anymore because they're this fan guard is the the mold is shot I mean it is just it is just shot nope nope and eh, maybe these are like last resort ones here that's trash. Let's see this one. Let's look over this one here. Let's see. Nope. Nope. And oh my god, the flash on this one is just terrible. This one is <laughs> All right. Well, we'll put it in the put it in the pile. All these other ones trash. Let's look at this one. Nope. Nope. Holy crap. Look at this. There's always on this one, it's almost acceptable. I mean, it's a last resort piece, but there's always one that's just got this little, like, bolt head that just never got formed all the way. So we'll just cut that one off, put it in the pile, throw these ones away. Okay, let's see. I've got a lot of spare parts here. <laughs> let's see what we got out of, is it this bag? Yeah, let's see what we got out of this bag. So it looks like so far on each tree, there's just one that's acceptable. All the other ones are, are just horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Okay, let's look at these ones here. I'll bet you it's one off of each tree. Let me put this one here. So I've got one bag left after this one. So let's look at these. And the answer is, ooh, this one's acceptable, that one's acceptable, and that one's acceptable. They're crap on the bottom, but it looks like we got three that will work. Woohoo! <laughs> I got three fan guards out of all this that are actually worth using. So I got to get these cleaned up. And uh, and get them glued on. So I'm going to put these other ones. In. Well, let's look at these one, these trees here. Good. 
no and good so let's take that one off throw it away that's a good one let's look at this one no almost and almost so let's take that one off throw it away and let's look at this one oh, it would have been good except the fan guard isn't fully shot so you got this giant gouge in it like a somebody took a bite out of it and that's no good this one's good and that one's okay so let's cut the one that somebody took a bite out of off and throw that one away and so that's it so I've got a bag here that has some in it and looking through the bag they look okay there's two of them in this bag that look okay so those were spares spare parts that I had so enough with the spares and this is a bag or a package that I haven't opened yet and just looking through the package that this one is a maybe and this one is a no two of them are garbage so that's a nine dollar package that you can't use woohoo sweet anyway let me get my tool out and I'll show you how I use it on these okay so this is my fan guard cleanup tool so this fits inside the fan guard after I'll leave the fan guard on the trees and I'll come in basically like this and I'll scrape any And I'll scrape any uh, flash off the inside all the way around. And I have to clean up the landing up here where the, uh, where the um, grill fits in. So I'll do that all the way around. See, there's flash here. There's flash all the way around. Once that's done, it fits over the tool like that. And I'll nip off around here and I'll, I'll push this down further of course and it'll bottom out on this this area where the shelf is is as wide as the fan guard so I can just scrape along it and clean up any uh, flash and, and stuff and this tool will help support the fan guard so that um, when I'm cleaning it it's not flexing and the possibility of breaking it so I'll get that done now, I want to show you something. This, I have a lot of paint mules and, and stuff like that. This, if you look at it from the side, this is what the fans should look like. How come I never have my pointer out when I need it? What'd you guys, there we go. Okay, you see these blocks here and here around the the fan guard, or those are actually on the fan base. And then up on top, there's a little bolt and everything, and that's what secures the fan guard to the fan base. These are done by Frontline CAD. Oh, I'm sorry, Shortline CAD. So shortlinecad.com. What I'm hoping he'll do, he needs to fix the base here, and he's working on that, to fix the base um, because the type of 3D printing he's doing, the bottom side has a rounded effect. So it doesn't set down on the top of the hood, on top of the fan hatch, like it's supposed to. But if he can fix that, this is a very good 3D printed part. Now, I've grit blasted it to remove some of the um, relief from the, uh, the print lines, but... The only way I can see those print lines right now is, be, is with OptiVisors. Through normal viewing, I cannot see the print lines. These are beautiful parts. The exterior surface and the um, fan su motor supports and the motor 
are extremely well done. He's got a very small gap between the fan guard and the fan base to represent the split between the fan guard and the fan base. It looks really nice. They're super thin. And so what I would like him to do is thicken up the part that goes into the hood, which he has done, because the old the old section, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little wavy right in right in here. You can see it. That's because it would part was too thin. So if he made that about 15 to 20 thousandths, that would thicken that up nicely and give it a nice solid ring to mount into the hood. Now, um, the other thing I'd like him to do, if he can, because this is all just software in CAD, and you, he doesn't have to cut a new mold or anything like that, is I'd like him to thicken up this ring just a little bit so that we can use, for those of us who have lots of them, Canon and Company parts, like these etched parts that will fit right into there. Right now, they don't. They would fit, actually, I'm wondering if that's, looking at this now, oh, it's exactly the same size as the outer ring. So if we could change that a little bit to accept the Canon parts, that would be great. I'm pretty sure these Canon motors um, will probably fit in here on that, so I'm not worried about that. And of course the fan blades, I have to see if they would fit inside of there also. So we're, I'd like to work with them to see if we can get that to these to be replacements for the, the uh, defunct Canon parts. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not speaking for Dave, and I don't, I don't know what his plans are, but um, if he's going to fix the molds or not, I don't. If I were to guess at it, I would say he's not. So these would be a good replacement for it. And um, uh, if we could just, if he could just, uh, Matt at Shortline CAD could just get these um, little areas fixed up. This is an excellent, excellent part. So anyway, put that aside. And so I'm going to go ahead and get these cleaned up. I'll show you what I do. I showed you what I did, or what I will be doing. I'll get them cleaned up, and then we'll get them onto, onto the shell. Um, so I don't leave really anything in the dark. I thought maybe I'd show the cleaning up of one of them. I've got these two cleaned up on the inside, and maybe I'll show you the cleanup of this. Even though you won't see it up close, you'll get the idea of what I'm doing um, so you understand it better. So. You can see there's some flash right here, right here, and there's flash all the way around their shelf here and all the way around. So, I've got, of course, like I say, always use a new blade. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just carefully slice that flash off. I don't want to cut into the shelf that the fan grill fits on. I just want to slice off this flash. And I just let the sharpness of the blade work. Next, I'll go in and I'll scrape it. And I don't scrape that much. I only scrape enough to get rid of the shiny plastic. So once the whole surface from the from the shelf down is dull, I don't scrape it anymore. The advantage of using a sharp knife doing this is the knife glides over the surface very nicely. If it was not sharp, it would grab.
Okay, so now that I've done that, the process of scraping that on the inside pushes plastic, very, very thin plastic, which um, I call slough, which was a term that Tony Sissons used, and I liked it, so it's easy to remember what that is and to explain. So the slough comes out over the shelf area and you don't want that there because when you put your fan blade or your fan grill in you want it to sit flat on that shelf on the inside so what I'll do is I'll take a chisel blade and the chisel blade isn't flat all the way across it has a very slight angle to it so I'll take that angle that's furthest out that point and I'll stick it in onto the top of the shelf. Now I'm not scraping any plastic off. I'm just removing the slough. And it came up on top of the shelf or above the shelf line. really hard to do on camera. The other two went really easy. Okay, so I've gone around the shelf now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the number 11 blade again and I'm going to scrape away from the shelf. And that's going to take, because when I use the, the chisel blade, it removed some of it, but it pushed that little bit that was above the shelf into the fan. So now what I'll do is I'll scrape into the fan. and I'll get that slough all the way off. And that takes care of that. So the next step is take the uh, nice sharp cutters and don't cut up against the part, cut against the sprue. Or cut out towards the sprue. There we go. There we go. And one more. Okay, so we got all three parts, and I'll show you cleaning up just one of these. So now, this fits snug. 
over that tool. So now I can come in with the sharp knife and I can cut off that tree piece. and I can scrape the outside. And I'll do the same thing as I did on the inside. I'll scrape the outside until all of the uh, shininess is gone. You really don't have to remove a whole lot. Just be careful not to knock off these bolt heads. Now what's also happening is when I scrape the bottom, it's pushing slough out the bottom. So we'll have to go back and clean that up also. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and look at the bolt heads to see if there's any flash around them that I need to clean off. And I'll do that with a sanding stick. I need to cut that because the the edge that I need is not there. Let me see. Nope, I don't need that. Let me. Oh, here we go. This edge I can use out here, and this edge. So I'm just gonna slightly sand that around. And that takes care of it. Okay. Now, I can take this, this ring off. And I got to clean the slough 
off the bottom. This is where, turn this over, put it back on, but hold it up at the top like that. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to scrape this in towards the inside of the ring. Okay, now that that's on the, I think you can see, let me zoom in, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, you see all this fuzzy stuff around it? That's the slough. Now we'll clean that up, just carefully hold the ring, and just scrape against its edge. And that cleans up one fan ring. So I'll go ahead and get these two done, and then I'll get them all glued on to the fan bases. Okay, so I've got the fan guard glued on the dynamics, and I've got the fan guard glued on to the uh, leading radiator fan. Now, I'll glue this one on with you, and you're, think you're probably thinking, well, I don't need to see you glue it on. I know how to glue stuff on, and that's great. I agree with you, you probably do, but maybe you don't know that these have an orientation also, um, and if you just willy-nilly glue it on, you may or you may not get it in the right orientation. So let me explain. The Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, all these bolts, these hold down bolts around the, the fan guard, one of them, or any one of them, needs to be facing center forward and center backwards. That's the orientation. Oh, I'm sorry. So you can see center forward and center backwards. Um, when these things were brand new, they used to snap on very nicely, but now that they're not new anymore and there's not much of a pin coming off of them, it's difficult to get them on and have them stay in place. And then once you get them on, you got to make sure that your bolts are lined up properly. So let me see if I can get this on without it coming on. Oh, there it goes off again. Because once you glue these on, they're such small plastic, you don't have a lot of time to work them to get them back in. See, this keeps going skewed a little bit. you got to be very careful.
I look at this down the back and it still needs to rotate over a little bit and every time I touch it it moves the other two went on actually pretty decent this one is really giving me fits I think that's it yeah that'll do it let me look at that this way yes okay when you glue these on also I highly recommend using this cement because it evaporates quickly and it it gets in there quick enough that it'll glue it in but it evaporates quick enough where you won't ooze it if you touch it and always glue them from the inside because you want that ring separation on the outside see it's sticking up a little bit you don't want any melted plastic oozing to the outside so you want to be very careful with your handling while you're gluing and I glue it all the way around nope, it's sticking up again And what I mean by this stuff evaporates quickly, if you don't have the parts touching, it's not going to stick. And there we have all of the uh, fan guards glued in place. Now, this one doesn't go on until after it's all painted and everything. So all that will get painted on the tree and stuff like that and, and it'll do that. The fans, they'll get painted off of the model and then installed after everything's done. And uh, so this portion is done. Installing the fans and all that, that's all done. I'll take care of the fan blades. Basically what I do is I'll grit blast. I'll move this out of the way. I'll grit blast all of this, paint it. Um, I'm sorry. I'll grit blast all of this. I will grit blast all of this. I'll assemble it. I'll grit blast it again lightly because where I cut this off, I'll have to do some sanding and stuff. And then get that all. Then I'll paint it all as an assembly. Then it'll go into the model. And the same for this. I'll grit blast all of this, all of this. Then these get formed on these tools here. And we'll do that on camera. And then these go into the holes here and through the fans. And then everything glues into place around this. So I'll do all that on camera. This might be the only time I ever use these. I've never done these before. And I'll see how what the process is and if I like the way it looks. Maybe it works out great. I don't know, but we'll see. But this is a, we'll go over putting all this together um, on camera with you. So that takes care of all of that. And now we'll move on to putting the lift rings on. All right, now I've got all of this done as you can see, but during the deconstruction phase, there was one thing I forgot to do. So I need to do that now 
and uh, get that done before I add any more details. And that is to cut off the um, uh, class lights because I'm going to be putting in um, um, uh, was that fiber optic class lights. I'm not going to be lighting them, but it'll give it the glass look to it. To do this, it's like I say, it's very important to use a ultra sharp blade because you want to be able to just slice that area without the blade catching and slipping and stuff like that and hitting the the, um, the gasket that's around it and stuff like that. So it's, um, I can't show it on camera really, but it's just a matter of getting in there and, and just carefully, slowly slicing that off. So I'll do that on all four. And then what I'll come back and do is find the center, make a drill point um, prick with my like uh, my scribing tool, and then I'll drill through the, and then I'll show you how I make the class lights. So I've got the <clears throat> holes drilled. I've got the the um, the bumps trimmed off, and I've got the holes drilled. You can see there and there. Now it's easy. To locate the center of these, let me zoom in here a second. Okay, you can use these three points. There's three little tabs around the um, gasket. There's one on here, there's one here, and there's one there. Just use your eye and line those up and make your, your um, uh, mark for where you're going to drill. Um, the most important part. Oh, there's two important parts here. One is to make sure you're on center with your, um, <clears throat> with your, um, you know, making the prickle mark for the drill. And the second part is when you're drilling this is to make sure you're perpendicular to the shell, not, you know, angled in any direction because when you put in your fiber optic, if it's angled, it's going to cause the edges not to sit well into the, into the shell. And I'm going to show you what I'll do to um, get the fiber optic to sit in there. So first I drill it with a um, like a 12 thousandths um, uh, pilot drill and then I come in with a 32 thousandths drill. Now I use a 32 thousandths because <coughs> excuse me, the fiber optic is 30 mil which is 30 thousandths but measuring it it comes out to 31 thousandths so I want a little bit of clearance around the outside edge so that there's not an interference fit and that way when I put the um, fiber optic in it and I hold it in place it will um, I can put some CA in from behind and a little bit will wick into the hole and, and hold it firmly so this is the uh, BL Hobby products I don't know if it's still available um, I bought it a long time ago I mean I think about maybe four or five years ago and I still have a good amount of it <clears throat> I've always been looking for a way to do class light so if I wanted to light them I could I don't I just want the, the glass look to it so now we're gonna make a class light and we want the class light to be approximately let me measure this here real quick approximately 60 thousandths in diameter so what I do is I take a piece of fiber optic <clears throat> and because it's rolled it stays kind of curved but that's okay so I'm going to take a piece of fiber optic and you want to slice it you don't want to just chop it if you slice it it'll cut through very cleanly and leave a nice clean uh, face to it then what I'll do is I'll put this into a pin vise and when I put it in the pin vise, it's going to straighten it up a little bit. And if it doesn't, I'll just tweak it till it's straight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a soldering iron and we're going to go onto this part of the soldering iron, the barrel, and I'm just going to bring it in, but I want to bring it in perpendicular to it so it'll mushroom over evenly. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. Maybe I can show you it happening. Whoop, a little too much. Let me put my hand here. There we go. Okay, 
So we're going to bring this in, and we're going to just, we don't want to touch it, we just want the heat to mushroom it. There it's mushrooming. All right. So, there we have a mushroomed end. Looks really, really good. Now let me measure that. We're at 59 thousandths, which is perfect. So here, let me, so you can see the dial. So it's at 59 thousandths, which is just fine. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take that out. And it's at a little bit of an angle, but it's on the it's on the curvature a little bit. But that's okay, because when we glue it in, it'll set freely into the hole. Now, we're gonna that's where that goes. But see, it sticks out a bit because there's a like a fillet on the back of it, but it's a con convex fillet, so it curves out. So we're going to take care of that, and I didn't get ready, so let me turn the camera off, let me get ready, and uh, I'll show you what to do. Now, I want to show you something also, so that that 059 was the right size. I'm going for anywhere between 059 and 061. Now that's not always going to happen, because on the last two that I just did, they came out to about 060 four maybe so I'm gonna do this one oversize on purpose this one should be oversized let me see here real quick okay that's at 063 so that's still good but I, th I think it's just a little too big for what I want. I want to stay within a couple thousands. So this stuff sands really easy, but just don't sand the front side. Get behind it and just rotate the pin vise around it. Whoops. Rotate the pin vise around it until you get it anywhere between 059 and 061. We're at 062 right now. So I'm angling the sanding paper or the sanding stick into the base. We're at 060, right at 060. So that one's good. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you how I get it set in like that. This one I already did. So I can glue it from behind. It just has a little bit of a bubble coming out. See if you can see it. There you go. So now we're going to try to get that the same all the way around. <clears throat> Let me zoom out so I can do this on camera. So I've got this ball cutter, like a Dremel ball cutter. It measures 55 thousandths. <clears throat> and I've got a 61 thousandths drill bit. Uh, 61 thousandths, oh man, I can't see anything. Uh, 61 thousandths is a, basically it's a 1 16th. Because if number 53 is an 0595 and a 52 is an 0635. So, this one, when I measured the shank on it, it was 061, so it works just fine. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take this, we're going to take this um, round cutter, and we want to go perpendicular into the hole, and you just want to spin it. And you don't want to put too much pressure on it because you're going to check it. You don't want to go in too deep either. <coughs> Now, with the drill bit, we don't want to cut, so we're going to spin it 
in the opposite direction of the cutting. So the cutting would be clockwise, so we want to spin it counterclockwise. And this is going to give me the chamfer in the hole that I need to see if these fit properly. A little bit more. But just do a little bit at a time. And um, <clears throat> and then you won't overdo it. Check that out again. <clears throat> Just a hair more and it will be even with the with this side. Probably just a little bit of a spin there. And a little bit of a spin there. <clears throat> Let's see how this works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down the top to see if they stick out evenly. This one needs to go in just a little bit more, just a tiny, tiny bit more. And they're both even now. They both stick out about the same. So the front's done. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get the back done in the same exact way. I have to do it to my friend's Erie Lackawanna 35 also. I got, I've got it all drilled out. I just I painted it and I go, oh crap, I forgot to do the class lights. So I'm doing those also. So I'll go ahead and get these done. And then we'll move on back to adding detail. Go. Okay, when you're done getting everything um, in where you want it to be and you get your your holes carved out the right way, um, you want to take your uh, fiber optics out and mark which one that they'll go into because you, you, you custom cut the hole for each specific one so you want it to go back into the uh, appropriate one. So I just put them in tape and then just mark front right, rear right, front left, rear left. Okay, um, just real quick, uh, one little tidbit um, before we move on to adding detail. Um, when you're doing the um, mushrooming of the fiber optic, um, here's a tip to keep it, you know, pretty much straight. Because sometimes when you, um, uh, if you're just holding it, let's say this is the soldering iron, and we got the fiber optic in here and you're just holding it there depending on where the center of the heat source is it depends on how the the mushroom is going to be sometimes it might go this way or this way or that way but if you slowly spin it you're going to keep the um the sides pretty much even and you'll get a pretty decent um centered mushroom so that's just a tip. Um, just spin it a little bit, you know, very, very lightly. Also, if you don't make it the right size, let's say it's, 
it's undersized. I showed you if it was oversized, you can just sand it around. But if it's undersized, just go right back to the soldering iron and spin it, and it'll um, it'll continue mushrooming. So that's just a little tip on on building those. So that's all done, and I'll move on to adding detail. So, all right, so it's time to get the uh, back to adding detail. You saw me do the uh, the site or it's like uh, the. Um, um, uh, class lights so it's time to get back to adding detail I know you want to see me get these uh, grab irons and NBW's in place but we'll get to that they're the last thing I do um, right now we're gonna put the lift rings on there's three types of lift rings there's a small medium and large that's for the um, second generation uh, hood units for the first generation there's a larger ring than the three sizes I have here but we're not working on a first generation unit right now, we're working on a second generation unit. So the tools I'll be using, of course, I got my chisel tweezers and my, my pointy tweezers. We got a, a pair of Xeron um, photo etch pliers that I've modified the ends to for um, doing a couple of lift bar stuff. But I use these, these I use these for pushing the lift rings into the hood. I've got my my Xeron um, uh, photo etch nippers and I got this set of uh, flat nose, I think they're called duck build pliers and I use this for cleaning up the, uh, the lift rings um, prior to putting on. I've got a fine diamond file. Um, I highly recommend you uh, getting a set of diamond files. They're great for or for filing photo etch, the tabs and stuff like that. Get the fine ones, you won't need the medium ones, just the a set of fine ones. And I have a number 85 drill bit, was, which is .011. Um, I use a, a, a drill bit that's smaller than the size I need for these posts on the lift rings. That's because I want to be able to push these lift rings into the shell and the smaller size hole will be tight enough that they'll stay put and I don't have to glue them and it'll keep the lift rings clamped together really tight. Now, if I remember correctly, I also used um, a .012 um, drill bit, but for some reason measuring these right now, it all they all say .011. So I, I may be doing .012 for the dynamic brake hatch and for the fan hatch. Definitely .011 for the uh, uh, inertial filter and the exhaust hatch. So let's go over the lift rings real quick. So for the the smallest size on the second gen units are on are on all this this is the same for all from the GP30 on up to the 30 to the um, through the Dash 2 series. So. On the inertial filter and the exhaust hatch, you have the smaller size, which is the Plano number 14653. These are uh, 2 and 3 eighths by 1 and 3 eighths. So 2 and 3 eighths OD by 1 and 3 eighths ID. So they'll go into these three holes and then these two. I still have to drill the holes. These two go in line with the hood this one goes perpendicular to the hood. These two go perpendicular to the hood. Okay, the next size is for the dynamic brake hatch. And you have two. You got one here and one here. Now, uh, let me get my pointer out. It's better than using my finger. So you got one here and one here. Now if you have a non-dynamic brake hack, hack, you have a non-dynamic brake hatch, you'll have three. You have one here, here, and then you'll also have one here. So, on the, um, on that one, we use the largest of the lift rings, not the largest that Plano makes, but the largest of the three I have here, and that's 14651, which is three and three eighths by one and three quarter. Now, this one also goes back here on the long hood side here and here so you got the largest one here on dynamic brake hatch and on the sides of the long hood 
Now, the medium size is 14652. And those are two and three quarter by one and a half, so two and three quarter OD by one and a half ID, and those go on the fan hatch. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm gonna turn the camera off real quick and I'm just gonna drill all these holes. I don't think I need to show you how I drill holes. I think everybody knows how to drill holes. So I'm just gonna use my um, scribe tool, poke a, a mark in the center of each one of these locations and then drill it down. All right, a little tip for you here. Um, when you finish drilling, actually two tips. When you finish drilling these holes, don't just think you're done drilling. Take your drill bit in your, in your pin vise and just without spinning it, just push it straight down into the hole. Because you'll think that you've drilled a nice clean hole, but I guarantee you, you haven't. There's still some um, bits down inside of there. So push it straight down in until it there's no resistance and it comes out real easy. The next tip is when you do your dynamic break hatch holes, drill through and then drill a little bit more to leave a mark here and here. And the reason you do that is because when you put in these Plano lift rings, they stick out the bottom of the dynamic brake hatch a little bit and will interfere with the hood. So drill that out and then just get yourself like a 25 thousandths drill bit or something and drill all the way through. And that way when you put this back on, you'll have um, clearance holes for the pins that come out through the hood. So let me get everything set up and I'll show you how I go about cleaning up the lift rings and inserting them. Okay, so I'm going to do the um, inertial filter hatch and the exhaust hatch first. I just work from the front and move back. So these are the smallest ones here. So what I do, and I don't think the Xeron are the best cutters around, but they do pretty good. Um, so the first thing I do, and it, they don't work if you use just the tip of them, it, it tends to bend them over. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just cut part of the frame away. Okay, now here's the part that becomes a little work. I used to try to cut right up against that, but I would end right up against where the, um, the lift ring post is, but I would end up either cutting the lift ring loop or bending it over and it's just a pain in the ass. But um, you'll notice on here, there is a half etch line right there. That's where you're going to be bending it, but the post comes right into it. So what I do is I just come up here, put them deep into the into the um, cutters so that it'll snap it, and just cut it right off. Where did and there it is right there. There it is right there. Now I don't think I can zoom in anymore. Let me see. I'm going to go in as far as I can till it goes blurry, and then I'll come back. There we go. Let me come back. Okay, because this is the part that uses the tweezers and the pliers and all that stuff. So if I can pick this thing up. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do, uh, I don't know if I can do this on camera is I want to try, or I'm not try, I have to. I have to put this inside the pliers, and then I grab it with my fingers, and I pull it up so that the, the post is above the plier jaws, and I hold it really good. Let me zoom out just a little bit so it'll stay in focus while I'm doing this. Then I'll take a... Um, diamond file and I, I chose this shape of file because it fits in between the rings good and what I'll do is I'll drag it across 
and once you drag it backwards it'll smooth off any rough edges and then you can go back and forth now with diamond files they cut in all directions So that takes care of that one. Now what I'll do is I'll take my flat nose pliers, duck bill pliers, I'll put the lift ring in with the half etch line facing up and I'll put that etch line right at the edge of the jaws and I'll bend it back at a 90 degree. Now, you'll see it's in a, in a V-shape. Maybe you can't see it. You'll see it's in a V-shape right there. So now what I'll do is I'll put that V-shape sideways in my pliers, just like that. What this is going to do, it's going to allow me to squeeze those together, keeping them on the same plane. Because if they're not on the same plane, your loops are going to be off of each other. So, take my tweezers here. Now, I'll release some pressure off of the plier handles. And do that. Now that I've got this held in the tweezers, I'll take my pliers and I'll squeeze that together just like that then I'll take <clears throat> another diamond file a flat one and I'm just gonna come right across the edges just to oh, can't do it on that not enough grip there we go so I'll put it in there and then I'll just come across the edges just a little bit not much there we go now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this in the ply in the tweezers down low I'm gonna take this pair of pliers here and I'm gonna grab it right up against the tweezers so I have just a very small amount sticking out. Now I'm going to take my shell, let me zoom out. I'm going to take the shell, and remember the orientation is in line with the hood. So I'm going to hold that, and I'm just going to press it into the hole, release, grab up a little bit further, push it. If you grab up too high, your pliers may go this way or that way and you're going to tear everything up. So just a little bit at a time. Until the ring is touching the top of the hood. And there we have one ring in. Now these small ones, you have to be careful, these small ones are very easy to bend the ring out of shape. So that if you're using these, these pliers and you grip too tight and push, sometimes you'll deform those rings. So you gotta get, you know, you'll get a hang, for, hang of it and you'll understand the amount of pressure you can use and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest done. They're all done exactly the same way. I may need to drill the dynamic brake hatch and the um, fan hatch and the side holes um, with point zero one two. If I have to do that, I'll let you know and um, and such. But at this time, after measuring, they seem to measure the same um, as this lift ring here. So, but I'll let you know if I have to do that. All right. So I've got all the lift rings in. Um, so to go over this I, I, I never write things down so I always have to reinvent the wheel when I do these things but I wrote them on the packages so let me go over real quick what we got going here 
So the small lift rings go on the inertial filter hatch and the exhaust hatch. Those, and I gave you the wrong number before, those are number 84s and that's .0115. So that's for inertial filter and exhaust hatch. Um, that's part number, Plano part number 14653. That's the smallest ones here. The dynamic brake hatch and the long hood ends, that is the larger lift ring and that is again uh, 14651 from Plano and for the dynamic brake hatch since the material is thinner here you can use a number 82 which is a .0126 for the long hood ends the material is thicker there so you can use a 164th which is .015 so that would be for the dynamic brake hatch and the long hood end for the fan hatch, that's uh, 14652, and that <coughs> is a number 82, um, 0.0126. So I've got all that taken care of, and like I said, I drilled the two holes here and here um, so that the, um, the pins, so you can see them right here and right here, those will go through those holes and there's no interference. You don't have to worry about the pins that come through up here and here for the exhaust hatch because there's a bevel on the side of the shell that they fit right around. And you'll also notice here that I've cut the opening wider for the exhaust hatch here. So now when you look down through the top you don't see any of the hood underneath it. Um, now I can glue the um, the grill back in place. So that takes care of all of the lift rings. The next item will be the sand hatches. I know you want to see the uh, grab irons and such, but we'll get there. Um, we're going to do the sand hatches next. Go. It's now time to put the um, sand hatches in. So I've got these drilled out. I step drilled them. Now what I mean by step drilling, I don't mean using a step drill. I mean using gradually larger sizes till I get up to what I want. Because if I just plunge it in with the size that I need, it's going to drill the hole quite a bit larger than what I really want. So step it up gradually in size until I get to um, .062. Now these are the sanding hatches. And the diameter of this base is .061. So what happens if I use a .061 hole, I get an interference fit. Simply, I mean it should theoretically fit perfectly in there, but it won't because the diameter here is the same as the diameter here, so there's no way for it to fit inside of that. So anyway, I drill it out to 062 and um, like I said, step drill it up. Now I've got the rear one in already. This one's a little bit more difficult to get set, the height set, but I built these uh, these little, they're 30 thousandths. I looked at a, um, or I measured a Canon and Company um, um, sand hatch, and from the underside of the lid to the top of the hood is 30 thousandths. So I, I cut a piece of 30 thousandths with an 062 an 062 hole and then cut it in half so that I can slip it underneath there and measure the correct height off of the uh, off of the um, hood. So I'll do that for the front. Now when you cut these parts off the trees don't cut it at the part. Cut it at the tree and then clean the part up. Because um, if you cut it at the part sometimes the um, the nippers will will slide down the um, the sprue um, piece and then you'll cut off a bit of the part and stuff like that so it's just best to cut it at the tree and then come back and clean it up. One thing you need to be careful of on these parts is the hinge portion this part here is fairly fragile and it's easy to when you hold it to break it so just hold it gently or you can if you have a large enough um, a large enough pin vise you can put this base into the pin vise. So as you can see here, oh, real quick, 
the orientation of these things is the hinge is always to the outside same on the back these are the only style sand hatches or this style hand sand hatch is what is used on the GP 35s and only this style this style is not used on any other hood units that I've ever seen and what I mean by that it has this little flip um, piece so you can just flip the lid up with that after the GP 35 that piece disappears so I'll go ahead and put this into the hole and I'll do my best to line it up but I'm not worried about it right now so then what I'll do is I'll put some cement around the base so to give something to hold it while I'm working with and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up you know make sure it's centered on the hood that's good and now I'll set the height okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down the side and I'm gonna look down the front to make sure it's not you know rotated or cocked at any angles so let me just look here and I can see that it needs to come up a little bit now is the time you do all your fine adjusting I'll look down the nose and see if it needs to be adjusted in any other directions alright that looks good and now I'll just add some more cement all the way around it and then I'm gonna add a little bit of CA from the bottom And that takes care of the sanding head. So just checking to make sure. I want to make sure that's perfectly straight before I say it's done. And that looks actually pretty good. Let me do a double check on this. That's good. And that's good. Good. And I got this little piece I can check the, this other side. Yep. Everything is good. So that takes care of the sand hatches on the front and on the back. Before I even work on anything else I'm gonna let that glue all set up so that I don't accidentally press on it and I mean you don't want to touch it anyways even after it is um, set up because you have a good chance of possibly breaking off these uh, hinges and you don't want to do that so just remember the hinges go to the outside so now it's time for what you've all been waiting for the NBW's and the grab irons. So let me get everything all cleaned up here, get everything all set up, and we'll go to working on those. But oh, before we go to working on those, let me just mention something. Um, the, one of the reasons I like these, these NBW's for the grab irons from um, PBL, these guys right here, 
um, is if your grab irons are different color than the hood, then these are also a different color. So you can you can cut these off, put them on a on a stick with some double sided tape, and just stick them down, and you can paint them the same color as your as your grab irons, and then you can glue them on. Um, if they're not the if your if your grab irons are the same color as a hood as on the on this Pennsylvania unit, then I can go ahead and glue these straight onto the shell. And uh, same with the grab irons, I can get it all glued in place and then paint it all in place. But um, these are just very slightly oversized, but they're not bad. And I'll show you what I mean. Here they are installed on my friend's Erie Lackawanna uh, GP35. Let me zoom in on this. And you can see, they don't look too bad on there. I like them. I think they work really, really well. And the other thing that it allows you to do, even if your grab irons are the same color as the hood, if you're doing any striping, oops, I'm sorry, if you're doing any striping, barricade striping, you can get rid of all that and have a nice flat surface to do your um, taping on or your decals over and you don't have to worry about you know oh are they going to form well over the the um the nbws and which in any case should not the nbw should not be the same color as the stripes typically they are the same color as whatever the grab irons are painted now that's a typical situation the exception to that rule is for instance on some New York Central units or other model or other locomotives that I've seen just the portion of the grab iron that is grabbed is painted and the rest of it is the same color of the hood like for instance on, a, on some Penn Central RS3's I've seen this and, and such where just this rung portion here is painted yellow everything else is painted black so that's an exception to the rule there but um, other than that, I like the way they look, and um, I'm probably going to do most of my models like that, um, especially my CPT and C models because I have barricade stripes and stuff. And they're not that hard to do. Um, you just have to be really patient with them, and I'll show you how to clean them up and, and get them ready to go on and, and how to glue them in place. Um, again, this is the magic glue. To glue these pieces onto a cotto shell and then when I put the uh, grab iron in I back it up with um, some CA and I'll show you all of that so I just want to get that out of the way and then we can go on to uh, installing these grab irons right. now comes the magic time time to put in some uh, grab irons and get the grab iron um, uh, NBW's put in so when I was doing the, um, the deconstruction, I had already located and drilled for the nose and the top, I'm sorry, for the top of the nose, the side, the left side of the nose, and the face, because those all changed anyway. And I plugged these ones. So all we have left to do, really, are these back ones. I got this fly flying around. So when Kato molds these, you, if you have any of these and you've got the plastic um, um, or the Delrin grab irons, you'll note that they, they go in and then they curve or they go at an angle. That is because when they mold these, the mold has to pull straight out. So they can't go in at an angle like perpendicular to the hood. But now that we filled everything, I can go in perpendicular to the hood. And that's the key to when you're drilling these out is try to stay perpendicular to the hood. Um, so you're gonna have to look at it at multiple angles all at once to make sure you're doing that. Um, there was something I was gonna mention about the sand hatches, but I can't remember what it was. So anyway, uh, if I think of it, I'll come back to it. And, and mention it. So anyways, basically I've got a 
very sharp scribing tool. It's just a, a, a pen that was sold as a scribing tool and I've just kept sharpening it um, with a uh, um, wire, or not a wire, but with a, uh, a disc on a, on a Dremel. And I've got the holes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch right where the white is on these. So you can see where I've filled, I've got the white, let's see if you can see that in there. Well, you can see these two here. But I don't, oh, that's the other side. <laughs> that's why. So you can see all the white plugs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get my pin right on the center, make a small mark, look at it. If it's on center, go ahead and press it in a little bit. Then we're going to go to this side. I, this is at a bad angle. So I'm just going to zoom out. So I'm going to go to this side. Make a small mark. If it's not on center, just push your pin to the center and make a small mark. So that's all I'm going to do for all of these. Then what I'll come back and do is I'll take a point .0126 drill bit um, that's what it measures out to. I don't know what number that is, but I think it's a number, around a number 80. Because I'm going to be using um, Titchy Train grab irons, and they're perfect for this. So now, I am going to first look on the inside, and you see all these, these little pieces of, of, rod, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut those off, even with the inside of the hood. There we go. Now, I'm going to get that right in the mark that I made and I'm going to look at it to make sure it's perpendicular that way and that way and I'm just going to drill it in just like that so I'm going to go ahead and get that done for all of these making sure that I'm perpendicular to the hood and uh, come back and we'll get started on the NBWs. Okay, now that I've got the holes drilled and, um, and remember um, what I told you before let me get this in focus when you get your hole drilled through you're not done you need to go back with your drill bit and without spinning it just force it into the hole and clean it out and this is the point where if you get slightly off a perpendicular, you can just kind of ream the hole out a little with your, with your drill bit. So we've got that and taken care of. Now it's time to straighten out all of our grab irons. Now remember, on the Pennsylvania unit, we don't have a grab iron on the, on the front right battery box because of the ATS box on top. So we're one less grab iron. So typically there are how many? The one in front of the battery box. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So typically there's twelve grab irons. So we only have eleven on this one. So we have three grab irons for the nose, three straight grab irons for the nose, the two on the front and the one on the top, and you want to get out one extra, and I'll explain what that's for in a minute. Then we need one drop grab for the front, for this side, or depending on which unit you're building, or this side. Then you need 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven drop grabs for the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got all of our grab irons. Now we think, oh, we could just stick those in. Well, no, you can't because they're not straight. Um, they're roughly bent. I mean, they're bent good, but they're roughly bent. So let's take our extra straight grab and we're going to stick that in there. And we're going to push it up till it stops at the curve, right at the base of the curve. And then we're just going to, wait just a second, we're going to stop at the, t at the where the curve is like in the middle. So push down, sharpen that up, and we're going to bend it out so it's perpendicular to the rung. Then we're going to take the other side. And we're going to do the same thing. And now what I'm going to do is these fit real nicely right in between the pliers. And I'm just going to straighten out the posts. And I'm going to make sure that they're all perpendicular to each other. Do a little bit of tweaking. Now I'm going to look down the side of it and make sure the legs are parallel with each other. Okay, so that's good. Now this has a little bit of a kick out on the end here, so I'm going to take an old pair of um, uh, sprue nippers and I'm just gonna nip that and come across the other side and nip it even. Now what we want to do is just make sure that these fit in straight and it looks like they fit in just fine. So. I am going to take this one out and set it aside and now we'll do the real grab irons. So you saw how I did that one. Let's do a uh, drop grab because uh, the other the other three straight grabs for the nose would be the same as what I did on this one. So for this one what we're going to do is we're going to straighten up all the corners. So we're just going to grab it, press it, Grab that, press it, grab that one, press it, grab that one, and press it. Now I got to make sure that everything is straight and parallel. All right, now we'll see how well that one fits. It looks like it fits pretty good and we're just going to leave that one right there. When we're done bending or done cleaning them all up, we'll pull all of these out. So I'm going to go and get all of these done. You saw how I did it. I don't think I, you want to watch me do each one. So I'll go ahead and get those done. We'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've got the, all the grab irons cleaned up. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. So I've got all the grab irons straightened and just sitting in there, sitting in the holes. So there's all that. And I think I failed to mention to you guys that this step is very tedious because what I'm about to do is going to separate the men from the boys. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's tedious though. Very. Okay. 
Now that we've got all of these in, we can take them out. This isn't the part that's tedious, okay? Um, what I've done is I've drilled a whole bunch of holes on here to accept these grab irons. So real quick, I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to stick them in here. This is a card so I can grit blast them before I put them back in. So let me go ahead and get these all on the card and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've got all of the um, grab irons on a card, piece of card, and I forgot to tell you to also drill out your um, fan grab um, holes. So I've got the fan grab on the card also here. So these are all ready for grit blasting. And I want to grit blast them before I put them on the model because it'll give the uh, metal some tooth for when I glue it on the model. So now we're going to get to the um, the NBWs. So this is my spare tree so I've got extra NBWs. The first, so when you buy these things they come with two trees full like this to a package. Buy what you need plus a package because you're going to want some spares. Now the first thing I do this is the drill bit that I used to drill out the holes for the grab irons. These NBWs have a little half circle shape at one end. Let me show you that, see if you can see that in here. So yeah, you can see it right down in here. You can see the half circle shape right there. Now these half circle shapes are a little closed in because of the molding process. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your drill bit and, I don't know, let me see if I can get the angle right. And this is tedious, but it needs to be done so that everything fits. Maybe this way will work. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the drill bit and you're going to use it like a file. And this is really hard to show you on camera. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can just lay the drill bit into the groove, just like that, and you're just going to carefully move it back and forth. There we go. Until you open up. that half circle. So you have to do it to all these drill all these NBWs. So you get the idea what I'm doing is I'm making that opening the same diameter as what I need to go around these NB or around these grab irons. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those all cleaned up and we'll move on to the next step, which is to cut them all off. And I'll show you how to cut them off so there's less work involved in cleaning them up. Okay, so that was tedious task number one. Opening up these. Let me get this in focus here. Here we go. Sorry, that's, that's just paint. So, if you look here, see if I can get that. Let me put something behind it. Maybe you can see better. Oh, here we go. Maybe not. No, that doesn't work. How about uh, something yellow? There, how's that? Now maybe you can see the the holes are opened up or the circular parts are opened up a little more because I use this drill bit as like a uh, brooch and I was just going in and out and opening those up to be the same diameter as the uh, as the grab iron. Okay, enough of that. Now for tedious task number two and that is to cut these off. Now you can cut them off in two ways. You can use an X-Acto knife 
And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more if that'll if it'll allow me to. How's that? That'll be yeah, that'll be good. Okay. Now you can't really see it. I mean, in real life, I know you're not going to really be able to see it on the camera, but even in for me, you can't really see it. But where these NBWs are attached to the tree, that's where you want to cut them. Now remember I was saying cut the part, don't cut at the part, cut at the tree, and then clean up to the part. Well, this is an exception to that rule because you don't want to have to clean up all that tree sprue off the part. So you can either do one of two things. Take your blade and slide it down the ramp until you get to where it makes contact with the part and you just cut it there. You can do it that way or you can do the same thing with nippers. So I'm just going to go and then what you do is you go and just move that aside. So I need 24 of them I think. Let me see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 20, yes, I need 24 of them. So that's one. I'll just cut off a couple. Come down to the part and cut it at the joint there. Now, it blends in really well, so you really can't see it, but it's where the, you can feel it with the knife where the tree stops. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep cutting these off till I get 24 of them. Then we'll do tedious task number three. Okay, so I've got 24 of them cut off. They're all sitting right in here. And uh, you can see I only have half a tree left. So I'm going to put that back over in the bag. And it's time for tedious task number three. And this is how I hold them to clean them up. So, I have these two sprue nippers. This one's new. I'm not going to use it because these teeth or these edges are really sharp. And they, you can use them, but you have to have a fine touch with them. I have these old ones where the, the blade on it is not as sharp because I've used it for cutting just about everything that I've needed in the hobby to cut small parts with. So I'm going to be using this. So I'm going to zoom in on this. If I get off camera a little bit, I'm sorry. I will try to stay very much on camera. So let me zoom in here as far as I can go and get it. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pull one of these over. Right there. And what I'm going to do, that part that has the, the circular cut out in it for the uh, uh, the grab iron I'm gonna grab that side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this around and I want to grab that side with the bolt up so I'm gonna come in here see where am I here we go I'm only gonna do this once and then I'll just go ahead and do all that stuff so I've got it held in place right there. Now you have to have a fine touch. You don't want to clamp down or you cut these off. Then I'm going to take a sanding stick. Is this, yeah, I keep getting off screen. Gosh dang it. Take a sanding stick and I'm just going to carefully round off. hard to keep it on because I got to stay on camera here. Doesn't take that much to round it off. If I didn't have to do it on camera, it would round I would have it done already. And that takes care of it. Now I'll just drop it down there. And now the bottom of the NBW has the teardrop rounded shape to it. Now I'm just going to move that one aside. Now I'm going to show you here real quick using some needle nose tweezers. 
I can easily pick it up with the bolt head. So I'm going to set that aside somewhere where I won't sneeze on it. And I'm going to get the rest of the 23 done. And uh, that'll be it for the tedious tasks. And then we get to start assembling these things on the hood. Um, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to show you, you know, once you get into the hang of doing this, how fast it can go. Um, of course, now that I said that, it's going to be a real pita. But let's try it. Um, I showed you up close, so I'm going to show you far away, and I'll explain what I'm doing. So I'm grabbing one of the NBWs, rolling it in my fingers until I get it in the orientation I want. Grabbing it with the tweezers, or with the cutting tweezers. Adjusting it in the tweezers. And now, just sanding the circle around. Now I've tried to hold these things in like chisel tweezers. There's not enough grip on them. So using these cutting tweezers is better. Then I take it out of the tweezers, roll it in my fingers to get the dust off of it, the plastic dust, and just put it up with the rest of them. We'll grab another one. Get it oriented the way that I want it. Put it in the teeth. Get the sanding stick. Clean it up. Roll it in the fingers. Drop it with the rest of them. Get another one. Roll it in the fingers till you get it oriented. Now it's hard with these tweezers because one of the tips is broken. So I got to get it further in. There we go. Get another, I'll do two more. And I know the question is, how many have you cut apart holding them like this? The answer to that question is, a whopping one. But now that I've said that, I'll probably start cutting the crap out of them. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I've only I've only cut one, and that was when I was using the new one because they're really sharp. This one has a dull grip to it. I mean, it's still sharp enough to cut wire and stuff like that, but. Once you get a feel for the grip you need on it, you'll hold it each time. So that was two. So I'll go ahead and get the rest done. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. I got twelve more to do, and um, then we'll start installing it. Okay, I've got them all cleaned up, and it's time to install them. So all the tedious tasks are done. There's only three of them. Um, so remember, when I was putting the grab irons on, I told you to get one extra. Um, straight grab out. Not a drop grab, but a straight grab. A drop grab will get in your way. So I've got all of this grit blasted, but I'm not grit blasting the single one because I don't want tooth on it. So I'll put these aside, and these are ready to be cut and then installed. Did I hear you say cut? What do you mean cut? Don't you just insert them and glue them in? Well, glad you asked, and you'll get the answer here in a little bit. So <laughs> Let's start with the front. We'll just start with the top because that'll be the easiest to show you. Let's get this. I know it's blurry right now. I just got to get it. There we go. All focused in. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do. Where's my tweezers? There we go. 
So I'm going to stick this. I'm going to stick this grab iron into its holes and I forgot what side the bolts go on just a second I got a model with it on it already okay so the bolts will go on this side here on the inside so what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these bad boys here let me get it. Is it on can't yeah. Okay. And we're just gonna stick it right there. And we're gonna line it up. And we're gonna use our favorite cement, Tamiya extra thin, quick setting, and we're just going to touch that on there. Whoop, a little too much. There we go. And now, I'm just going to look at this and make sure it's straight. Okay, then we'll get another one. And we're just going to stick it right on the other side. Make sure it's straight. Okay. And this time I won't use so much cement. There we go. And that takes care of. And I'll push it into it so a little bit of the plastic that melted gets wrapped around it. Make sure it's straight. And that takes care of that. Now what we do is we carefully pull this out. And there we got our NBWs in place. Now when this fully dries, what I'll be doing is I'll be coming back in with the drill bit, use it like a brooch, and just push it into the holes until it's all cleaned up. But I want to let that dry first. Um, and uh, and harden up a little bit and so now let's go to the front well I can't really show you the front because the angle of doing it gets everything all you know out of focus and stuff but you saw how I did that and I'll be doing that for for these now on the front the bolt goes on the top and then on the drop grabs the bolt goes underneath the grab so I'm going to go ahead and get all these on and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done, including these guys. So you saw how I did it here. Nothing different. Same process. Okay, a real quick reminder again. Don't use the drop grab when you're doing drop grab holes. Use the straight grab. Um, because a drop grab gets in your way. Use a straight grab and just put them where they're supposed to be pull the straight grab out and when it's all done and dry you can put the drop grab in its place. Alright so all of the uh, NBWs are in place. There, there, and on the nose you can see that. Now like I said um, before I started this, let me zoom in on this just a little bit. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Somewhere it's going to focus. All right, let me back off a little bit. Okay, there we go. So like I said um, when I started, after all of these NBWs have dried, 
we'll use the drill bit like a brooch and we'll just take it and just go right down into the hole cleaning it all out now I've already done all of these but I just wanted to show you what I mean by broaching it's just taking a cutting surface and pushing it down and cleaning out um, the hole so now it's ready to accept grab irons so the next step is to cut the grab irons and then get them installed well you saw that I've got the NBW's on for the grab irons and for the fan hatch grab and they're all dry and good now it's time to get the grab irons on um, we're closing in on on this um, and I'm really excited about it so let's not delay this so what I've got here I don't like my grab irons to go through to the inside of the hood so I've cut this to be just shy of the thickness of the uh, the hood so it'll they'll be almost right at the uh, end of the opening uh, where the, the holes are this spacer is 0 0.043 thick as you can see right there and that is the distance from the hood to the back side of the um, grab iron so what I do so we're going to do the going to do the straight grabs on the nose first so let me zoom in just a little bit. Let's get that focused. Come on, you can focus. There we go. All right. So basically all I do is put the grab iron into the holes. Put the spacer in there. Turn it upside down, and where's my nippers? There we go. And using the broken one again, the one that I use to hold the NBWs, just press that down, nip, and nip. And we got that. I'm going to take that out. And we're going to go ahead and put that right into there you take that spacer oh <laughs> I I think I'm too close to the the uh because I'm because the center of the screen is here but I'm working up here <laughs> so there we go so now I gotta put the spacer see that spacer is too wide so I have another one this one right here That goes in there like that. Just press that down to the top of the hood. Carefully pull it out and we have the distance. Now what I do, and this helps the uh, this helps the um, the uh, sticking or pff, gluing the NBW like reinforcing it. I use some thin CA Put a little drop there. Let me get my applicator. Oh, my applicator should be out. Where is it at? Oh, there it is. It's in the wrong place in my drawer. You clean off the applicator tip. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little drop of CA. And I'm going to put it on the back side here, or I guess you could call it the front side. And it'll wick into the hole. Just like that. Now what, I, what you're seeing me do is I put the CA first on the grab iron and then I just quickly push it down while it's still liquidy. And it gets in there and that's it so now we'll do the front ones I'll do uh, the front one the two front ones and the side one which is a um, well let me go ahead and do the the side one that way we don't run this video too long it's already running pretty long so so 
we got it into there. You get my spacer out here. Push it through. Cut off the backs. All right. Now you can see that those two are the same height, 043. Now what I'll do is I'll put this drop grab. Hopefully I'm on camera. I'm not always looking at the camera there. Am I on camera? No. There we go, right there. Hitting my head on the light. Not on camera. Doing a good job. All right, so now I'll take the spacer. There we go. Nice and tight. You want to pull it straight out, otherwise you might pull the grab iron one side out a little bit further than the other. And then on each one of these now, I'll clean off the tip because I don't want a big glob. I just want enough to get into the um, grab iron. So I'm going to come off the top, put just enough on there to secure it. Just like that. Well, that's a little too much, but that's okay. Once you let that dry, we can just chip it right off. So I'll let that dry. I'll come back with a knife and chip it right off. So now you see how I do the grab irons. I'm going to go ahead and get the front done. I do the front the same as I did the top, and all of these drops on the back, I'll do the same as I did this drop. Now, I'm going to show you something real quick. Actually, when I get to the back, I'll show it to you. It has to do with this, this um, um, spacer. And I'll show you why it's the shape it is and why there's a little cut right here and, and such. So let me go ahead and get the two front ones done. This um, fan hatch grab is as simple as putting this in. I have another spacer. There's seven inches off the uh, the top, so I'll put this spacer right there, like that, and I'll push the uh, fan hatch grab down and glue it in place. Okay, a little tip go here: um, when you put out your thin CA, after a little bit, maybe a minute or two. It's going to start to congeal and you don't want to use that because it's thickening up. You want it fresh and um, thin. I mean, you want it to flow. If you, if you get a glob on your applicator, don't use it. You want to almost not see it on there, but when you put it on, you want to see the wetness come down over the uh, um, uh, joint area. So that's just a little tip. Um, I put it out a two or three times before I'm all done with the model. Now I've got the fan grab in. So I've got that in, you can see that. I use this, uh, this spacer, it's, I have written on it fan grab, and uh, that measures, uh, real quick, for anybody that wants to know, that measures Oh, I gotta fix my dial here. There we go. Okay, that measures out to be 0 0.079. You could use 0 0.08. That's fine. 80 thousandths. Because I think that's what this is, is 80 thousandths. It's just sometimes the, uh, the thickness isn't uniform all the way down. So that's an 80 thou by 40 thou piece and I just use it as a spacer for the fan grab. Now you might be asking how did I come up with the 043 
Uh, back in the late 90s, Gordon Cannon sent me a, um, a drawing of the EMD grab iron and measuring it out, it came out to approximately 040 or came out to 043, so that's what I cut it. But you could use 40 thousandths, that's only three thousandths difference, you won't even notice it. So you can use 40 thousandths for that. Okay, now I said I was going to show you why I have all these cuts in, the, uh, in this one. Um, mainly this recessed cut right here. What that's for is, let me zoom out because you're not going to be able to see it except to put the shell on end. So you see the, uh, the, um, the, the uh, number board gasket? Well, it sticks out from the hood a little bit. So that little recess goes right over that part of the gasket and that way this piece, the spacer, sits flat up against the inside of the hood. So that means I'll be putting on the grab iron that goes next to, ooh, it looks like the, uh, it looks like one of the NBWs came loose. There we go. Okay. Now I'll put this grab iron into it. And then when I put CA down, that'll help seal it in good. Yes, you do have to be careful that these things don't go flying because there's not a pair of tweezers in the world that will keep something from flinging off. Alright, now I'll use that tool or that spacer Oop, fell right through. See, I can't get it on camera because um, because of the angle I have to hold it at. Maybe this one will work. There we go. Okay, now I got it in there. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'll look down at the grab iron to make sure it's even on both sides, sticking out evenly on both sides. Get a little bit of this CA out here. There we go. I know, I'm off camera. And that takes care of that one. Now I'll clean up my applicator. Now this, this cutout here, that's simply for the, um, where the, the sight, or the, I'm sorry, not the sight glass, the uh, class light is, and I can stick the, uh, the spacer up right on the other side of the class light. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of these done, and that'll take care of putting on the grab irons. All right, well, all the grab irons are in. You can see the front. You saw me put all the front ones on. Now the back ones are in. And the fan grab is on. So essentially, oh, and I also finally put the grill onto the exhaust stack. 
So essentially, the shell is done as far as um, ready. It can be painted now. Um, there are things I need to do. Um, that being, I need to put the, I need to build the rear lights. I have the uh, jig for it here. They'll go in there, and and I'll show all of that. Um, I still need to build the odds and ends, which are the fans, and I need to grip blast the um, fan grills, and I need to get this fan grill or this fan completed, and I need to get the brake pump um, minor brake put in there. But that'll be painted. <coughs> excuse me. That and all of these pieces will be painted off the shell. I've got the um, number boards already painted from when I did the cab, so those can, after I'm done being, I'm done painting, I can uh, uh, decal those, get them in, and then put the gaskets around it and things like that. But for the reconstruction of the shell, it's all done. Well, as I just said, the reconstruction of the shell is all done. So I can go ahead and get a primer on it and get it painted. Um, I'll be painting this area black and then I'll mask it off and I'll put the uh, primer coat on it and uh, then of course the, the Brunswick Green or DGLE. So I'm going to answer two questions that might that people might be asking. Um, I don't know but it's something that I thought that maybe somebody might be wondering. Um, so why didn't I use a full cannon nose instead of just putting the brake um, inset into the nose or cutting the brake inset into the nose? The reason for that is shell integrity. Once you cut the nose off, gluing back on and being solid to this shell again is just not going to happen. Um, this is good that it's all one piece and everything will snap back together. You put, um, let, let's say you put a cannon nose, sub base, and cab on, you can throw out the window snapping this shell back onto the chassis like it's supposed to. Um, I like how Kato did things. I love how they, they assemble their shells and, and how it works on the chassis. I know we don't like the bevel in the chassis, but that's just the way it is. Um, but it was for shell integrity. Um, the second question that might be asked is why did I do the NBWs all the way around on everything? And the answer to that is uniformity. So the question might be why didn't I just do the ones that needed to move and stuff like, and stuff like that? Um, again, for uniformity. I like my models to look the same as far as typical parts. So if I've got these NBWs up here, I want them to look the same back here. So that's that's why I do that. So anyway, I know this was a long video. I hope you got a lot of information out of it. Um, maybe some tips, maybe something you can use. If you've made it all the way to the end here, <laughs> I really do appreciate it. I appreciate your time. So all that's left is the odds and end pieces and I'll go over all of that. There's really nothing to show but I'll show some of it. Putting the fans together, there's, it's not rocket science on that. It's just building the, sandwiching the, um, the blades between the two plastic pieces and then slightly bending the plastic or slightly bending the um, photo etch pieces so it's, you know, it's in the direction of pulling air up. Um, uh, doing the lights, I'll show you how I do that and doing the brake pump, there's really nothing to show there. So um, other than that, it's, it's all ready for paint. So again, thank you very much.